Hi, Mr. Richards here. Today's grade six practice problems review is on unit five, lesson six, methods for multiplying decimals. Find each product, show your reasoning. One and two tenths times 11 hundredths. Well, one and two tenths, another way to write that is as a fraction, 12 tenths, that's one and two tenths, times the 11 hundredths. 12 times 11 is 132. 10 times 100 is 1,000. And so we're in the thousandths place here. So we have ones, tenths, hundredths, thousandths. And then we can just fill in our 132 thousandths with a zero in our ones place. In B, we have 34 hundredths times, well, 2 hundredths. Multiply these numbers together. 34 times 2 is 68. And 100 times 100 is 10,000. And so, ones, tenths, hundreds, thousandths, ten thousandths place. We have 68 of these ten thousandths and we'll put the rest of our zeros in for those spots. So 68 ten thousandths. And now another method here involves looking at this two tenths, hundreds, thousandths. If I multiply this by a thousand. This is the number then two. And I can take 120 times two and get 240. But here's the thing. I multiplied by a thousand. So now I have to divide that by 1000. And that means we're going to take our decimal and go one, two, three to the left. And so this is going to be 240 thousandths. Can also simplify just to 24 hundredths. In our area model question, you can use a rectangle to represent three tenths times five tenths. What must the side length of each square represent for the rectangle to correctly represent three tenths times five tenths? Well, one, two, three on this side, one, two, three, four, five on this side. So each of these must be equal to a tenth going that way and a tenth coming down. So the side length of each square represents is, well, one tenth. What is the area represented by each square? Well, area is still side times side or length times width which in this case is one-tenth times one-tenth, which you take the fraction version, one-tenth times one-tenth is one-hundredth. And so we have ones, tenths, hundredths, and we have a one in our hundredths place, so one-hundredth. Each of these squares is then worth one-hundredth. To figure out what is 3 tenths times 5 tenths then, using this area model, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 squares. Each of these is an area of 1 hundredth. So if I have 15 of these 1 hundredths, I ultimately have 15 hundredths. In question three, one gallon of gasoline in Buffalo, New York costs $2.29. In Toronto, Canada, one liter of gasoline costs 91 cents. There are three and eight tenths liters in a gallon. Question A, how much does one gallon of gas cost in Toronto? Round your answer to the nearest cent. There are three and eight tenths liters in one gallon. The one liter is costing 91 cents. 
And so what we're going to need to do to get up to one gallon is to multiply our 91 cents by 3 and 8 tenths. And so what we're going to do here then is take our 91 cents is 91 hundredths and multiply now by 3 and 8 tenths is 38 tenths. 91 times 38 is 3,458. 100 times 10 is 1,000. And so we have our ones place, tenths, hundreds, thousandths. And we have 3,458 thousandths, which is really $3.45 with the eight tenths of a cent extra. But we need to round to the nearest cent here, and so this is going to be $3.46 as the 8 is going to cause the 5 pennies to round up to 6 pennies. Remember, 5 and above, give it a shove, round up. So $3.46. Then, to finish our question, is the cost of gas greater in Buffalo or in Toronto, and how much greater? Well, Buffalo costs $2.29. Toronto it costs $3.46, so the cost is greater in Toronto. And to figure out how much buy, we're going to go back to our subtraction of decimals. Remember, line up your decimal points with the $3.46, subtracting the $2.29. And so to solve, unbundle that. Take a dime away, bring it to the pennies. 16 pennies minus 9 pennies is 7 pennies. 3 dimes minus 2 dimes is 1 dime. A dollar, or 3 dollars minus 2 dollars is 1 dollar. So then we have our final solution here of 1 dollar, 17 cents, more expensive in Toronto. Speaking of addition and subtraction decimal review, let's go ahead and calculate each sum or difference. We have 10 and 3 tenths plus 3 and 7 tenths. And make sure we are recognizing that it's addition, lining up things with our decimal points, and 3 tenths plus 7 tenths is 10 tenths, which is equivalent to the 1, which is why we put the 1 there. 1 plus 3 is 4, and so we have 14 and no tenths, or simply 14. Our next question, 20 and 99 hundredths minus 4, line up the decimal point, and 97 hundredths. Well, 9 hundredths minus 7 hundredths is 2 hundredths. 9 tenths minus 9 tenths is no tenths, 0 tenths. And then can't take four ones away from zero ones. I'm going to unbundle this 10. 10 minus 4 is 6. 1 minus 0 is 1. And so we end up with 16 and 2 hundredths. As we continue going, 15 and 99 hundredths plus 23 and 51 hundredths. Recognize addition. Nine hundredths plus one hundredth is ten hundredths. One plus nine plus five is fifteen tenths. One plus five plus three is nine. One plus two is three. So we end up with thirty-nine and fifty hundredths, or simply thirty-nine and five tenths. And for our last question here, we have one and eight hundred ninety three thousandths minus, well, nothing in the one, and 353 thousandths. It's subtraction. And so three thousandths minus three thousandths is no thousandths. Nine hundredths minus five hundredths is four hundredths. Eight tenths minus three tenths is five. And one minus zero is one. So we have 1 and 540 thousandths, or simply 
1 and 54 hundredths. In problem 5, find the value of 49 fiftieths divided by 7 sixths using any method. Well, let's uh, use our multiplying by the reciprocal method. Let's keep and change our division to multiplication. And then the reciprocal of 7 sixths is 6 sevenths. We can then look to see if there's anything we can cross simplify. We can divide both the 49 and 7 by 7 to get 1 and 7. And even the 6 and 50, we can simplify. Just divide by 2. You get 25 and 3. And now we can multiply straight across. 7 times 3 is 21. 25 times 1 is 25. And so we have a solution of 21 20 fifths. Find the area of the shaded region. All angles are right angles. Show your reasoning. Let's divide this thing into rectangles because we can find the area of rectangles using length times width. If I'm going to call this rectangle A up here just to keep my work organized. For A, my area is going to equal 35 times 10, which is 350. Where else can we divide something? Well, how about right there? And now we'll look for the area of B. Now pay attention to your side lengths because not everything is always going to be neatly given to you. The entire thing here, up and down, is 30. Now this piece of it is 10. And so if I look and I'm cutting this up, there's 10 on that top portion, which leaves us 30 minus 10 or 20 for the bottom portion. So that width or length, or whatever you want to call it, is 20. We have to do something similar on the bottom now. This entire thing is 60. This piece of it is 15. And so kind of right around here, there's 15 here which leaves us with 60 minus 15, which is 45 for that other part. So for rectangle B, the area is going to equal 45 times 20, which is 900, which leaves us with C. Now C is neatly given to us. It's 10 times 10, no. 10 times 15. And so 10 times 15 is 150. And to finish the question, we're going to take our area of A, 350, add it to our area of B, 900, add it to the area of C, which was 150, and that should be 1,400 square units. There are multiple ways of getting there. You can divide these in many different ways. You can even use subtraction by finding the area of the big thing and subtracting out little rectangles and squares, but for right now this one seems uh, pretty good. Priya finds 1 and 5 hundredths times 2 and 8 tenths by calculating 105 times 28, then moving the decimal point three places to the left. Why does Priya's method make sense? Well, what one method that we've been using here is taking this 1 and 5 hundredths and indeed making it 105. Well, how do we make that jump? We're multiplying by 100. And when we multiply by 100, that's a result of moving that decimal place 2 to the right. Correct? 2 to the right. And then we've been looking at that 2 and 8 tenths and saying, okay, that's going to be 28. Well, how do we do that? We're multiplying by 10, which is the same thing as moving that decimal point over 1 to the right. And so you look at 2 to the right and 1 to the right. So far, we've moved it over 3 to the right. So to undo that, to move it three places to the left would seem to make sense. 
So it is the same thing. Now using that to calculate 1 and 5 hundredths times 2 and 8 tenths, this is use the fact that 105 times 28 is 2,940. All right, well, 105 times 28 is 2,940, as it says. And we ended up moving our decimal point by multiplying by a total of the 1,000 three times to the right, because 100 and the 10 made meant, blah, meant that we ended up multiplying by 1,000 total. And so if we end up dividing by the 1,000, it's the same thing as going 3 to the left here. And so 1, 2, 3 to the left here gives us a result of 2 and 940 thousandths, which is the same thing as 2 and 94 hundredths. And now, using her method to calculate 15 tenths, hundredths, thousandths, ten thousandths, times 24 thousandths, All right, let us take this and make it 15. Well, what did we do? One, two, three, four spots to the right. Well, four spots to the right is the same thing as multiplying by 10,000. What about the 24 hundredths. Well, let's make this 24. What did we do? 1, 2, 3 to the right, which is the same thing as multiplying by 1,000. And now to get our total here, we can take simply 15 times 24 and get 360. The answer this question, though, isn't 360, because what did we end up doing? Well, we moved our decimal points originally 7 to the right, which was the same thing as multiplying here by 10 million. And so now to undo this, we need to go 7 to the left, so we can divide by that 10 million that we had originally multiplied by. And so, this should be interesting. Um, let's rewrite our 360 here. We know we're going to be moving that decimal, or well, sliding it back 3 to the left, because of everything we've been doing. I'm not 3 to the left, I'm sorry, 7 to the left. Put a bunch of zeros. It's okay if you put more than you need. And so... If we're starting here, where the blue dot is, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and I got very lucky, 7. And so our final answer, I'm going to write a 0, decimal point, 1, 2, 3, 4 zeros, 3, 6, 0, which is the same thing, 0 point, the same 1, 2, 3, 4 zeros, and just 36, which is is tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousands, millions, millions, 36 millionths or 360 ten millionths is your solution. And so we've learned in the past, oh, we're just moving decimal points, we're moving decimal, okay. But realize what's really taking place here, why we can end up moving this back seven to the left, is because if we visualize this as 15 times 24, to get to the 15, we move this decimal point 4 to the right after multiplying by 10,000. We can move this decimal point 3 times to the right after multiplying by 1,000, which meant we moved it a total of 7 because we multiplied by 10 million. Move it back, 7 to the left to divide by 10 million, and we get our solution here of 36 millionths or 360 10 millionths, I think it was. That's it for this lesson, uh, the Grade 6 Practice Problems Review on Unit 5, Lesson 6, Methods for Multiplying Decimals. Good luck.